everyone and welcome for the third webinar of Roji uh, University EMEA series. My name is Alexandra and I'm a business development manager at Roji Norway. Today with me is Daniel Nimushenko and Daniel is our geosteering team lead, team lead and also the product owner for the resistivity. For those who don't know uh, Roji, uh, Roji is an IT company uh, with headquarters in Houston and several offices worldwide. Um, we uh, develop IT solutions for the well placement for over uh, a decade, and our main focus is uh, on geosteering. So today uh, we would like uh, to talk about uh, resistivity inversion for the enhanced well placement. I must mention that having uh, over 400 clients, we did uh, ex we did gather an extensive uh, knowledge about chair steering, and we are very happy to share with you through uh, this type of webinars. So, uh, why we chose resistivity inversion? Well, uh, in generally um, complex well targets nowadays are uh, pushing the development of high edge uh, technological equipment such as deep and ultra deep azimuthal resistivity tools. And that's uh, an, a great advancement for uh, well placement because these kind of tools help to map the formation boundaries and uh, fluid contacts at the distance up to 50 meters away uh, from the well bore without even crossing these uh, boundaries and contacts. However, there are uh, different kind of downsides on this way, and they happen due to the fact that the interpretation of this type of data is mostly performed on the vendor side only, and therefore, for the operator, it's difficult to actually know what kind of data is uh, uh, used as an input data for the, uh, for the calculation of the inversion. Uh, what type of inversion calculation was performed? Was it deterministic, stochastic, or any other method? And then it's difficult to check the uncertainties. And in general, the, it's difficult for the operators to get back to this data and do any kind of reinterpretation after the well is drilled. So therefore, uh, today we would like to uh, share more about the, the theory of resistivity. So we go back to resistivity basics and uh, talk about tool physics. Uh, then we'll talk about azimuthal resistivity signal and the ways to calculate the inversion to interpret the resistivity data. And later on, we will uh, share several case studies uh, from uh, application <coughs> of our vendor independent resistivity inversion calculation model that we've developed. With all this said, uh, Daniel, I'm giving you the stage. And uh, also, I would like to mention that uh, we will be waiting for your questions in the chat or in the QA. We will answer them during the webinar, or Daniel will uh, comment on them later on. Yeah, thank you, Alexandra, for the introduction. Uh, let's start. Let's start with resistivity basic, basics and uh, tool physics. So, um, what is resistivity and uh, why we need it for? Resistivity purposes. Uh, actually, um, at the beginning, resistivity was used for, for formation evaluation uh, in triple three, uh, triple combo uh, method like uh, gamma ray. We used gamma ray for as a marker for uh, shale uh, and reservoir, and uh, density and drone porosity we used as a, a separation of this curves. We used uh, as an indicator of uh, porosity and relatively permeability. And uh, resistivity uh, was used as a uh, marker of uh, fluid saturation. If we, if we see high resistivity, it means that we have hydrocarbon uh, formation. If we see uh, low resistivity, it means uh, we have some water in our reserve, reservoir. So for geosteering purposes, uh, we use uh, resistivity as a tool with the biggest depth of investigation, with the highest depth of investigation, and in comparison, in, in comparison with other tools, we can use in real time. And uh, what is special about resistivity is that it's not only the, it, it has not only the uh, biggest depth of investigation, it has a different depth of investigation for different curves. 
and it depends on the following uh, parameters like uh, there are there is a uh, there are rules of thumb uh, first of all uh, we can uh, have a big depth investigation for attenuations and for phase shift it depends on method and uh, of obtaining resistivity and uh, the higher the bigger spacing between transmitter and receiver the deeper we can see so for 40 inch uh, spacing can provide us uh, higher depth investigations than 16 uh, and uh, uh, the lower frequency the deeper we can see 400 kilohertz can see deeper than two, two megahertz and uh, another parameter which influences to the depth investigation it's the uh, uh, formation resistivity uh, itself so the higher resistivity uh, uh, resistivity formation has the deeper we can see and vice versa for resolution for vertical resolution so for phase shift we have the best vertical resolution than the alternation the better vertical resolution than in alternation and uh, the less uh, spacing the sharper we can see and two megahertz can provide us uh, better vertical resolution than 400 kilohertz and uh, in uh, low resistive formation uh, we can see sharper than in high resistive formation uh what is the tool how it looks like uh, propagation resistivity tool so here on the left uh, side of the slide you can see like simplified uh, configuration of uh, propagation resistivity tools it uh, usually uh, has uh, uh, two transmitter and two receivers so we generate a uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, electrical current on the coil of transmitter and uh, this electro uh, electrical current generate uh, electromagnetic field around the tool and uh, secondary electromagnetic field uh, registered by receivers and uh, the differences between waves of this electromagnetic wave uh, is a representation of our uh, formation resistivity so we have uh, two parameters of the wave we can uh, see on receivers it's a phase shift and uh, attenuation of amplitude so using these two uh two 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 curves uh because they have the different depth investigation we already can use them to uh, understand how far away we can see the boundaries so on the right side of the slide you can see the uh, simple model with uh, only two layers one meter uh shale and 30 meter sandstone and when we approach in the boundary uh because attenuation curves um, has the higher depth investigation it reacts first so it declined from uh, uh true resistivity of formation and show us some high resistivity than inside the shale because it's already see uh resistivity of uh, sandstone and uh, phase shift reacts uh, later closer to the boundary uh, because it has the less depth investigation and this separation between curves can be used for uh, uh, estimation how far we are from boundary so uh, if you know exactly the parameters of uh, of, of the layers like one on meter and 30 meters uh, we can reverse we, we can uh, resolve reverse task and uh, based on this knowledge, we can understand the distance to the boundary based on separation between logs. Uh, but what is the problem with the uh, uh, conventional resistivity is that, uh, that it is not azimuthal data and uh, we cannot distinguish these two cases when we uh, drilling uh, uh, down deformation or up deformation and we have the same response. We have the same contra resistivity contrast uh, between shale and reservoir. So we, we cannot distinguish these two situations uh, with using only conventional curves. That's the reason why we need azimuthal resistivities. Uh, what is the difference between tools uh, of conventional resistivity and azimuthal resistivity? Is that in azimuthal resistivity, we have to have some angle between transmitter and receiver. Uh, when we turned receiver and stand, um, um, against of transmitter on some angle we can receive uh, data from only one sector of the tool so here on the right side of the slide you can see the representation of this uh, data uh, uh, which we are obtaining during uh, the drink so 
like it, it could be two different representation of this data, directional resistivities. Uh, it's almost like actual resistivity, but it comes from uh, one sector of the tool. So you can see when we approach in a boundary above, uh, we see reaction on some one curve. And when we approach in a boundary below, we see uh, a response on uh, another sector. And for geo signal, how we can interpret geo signals when we have a positive signals, it, it signal, it means that we have some conductive boundary above. When we have negative signal, it means that we have some conductive boundary below. Uh, but uh, we have to, uh, to 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 understand that uh, it works only when we are inside the high resistive formation. When we are in conductive formation, uh, this will be interpreted uh, uh, opposite. So, for instance, if I, I approach in a boundary high resistive formation boundary, uh, my signal will be positive, and the same if I approach in uh, high resistive boundary above me, the signal will be negative. Uh, so we discussed that uh, a lot of different parameters influence to uh, depth investigation of the tools and vertical resolution of the tools. So uh, resistivity propagation of the tools is not so simple as the gamma ray or density porosity tools. They have a different configuration depends on the vendors. So they can put uh, transmitter and receivers on the different uh, uh, distance between each other. Uh, they can provide the different frequencies, et cetera, et cetera. And we have to know all of these parameters to uh, uh, to properly uh, simulate uh, logs for these tools. So for, that's the reason why we uh, why I'm showing this um, slide because in Starsteer we implemented almost all. Um, um, resistivity tools on the market, so you can see bulk resistivity tools here and deep and ultra deep tools on the left side. For now, it's more than 40 tools we already implemented, and we are constantly working on editing uh, uh, new tools, and uh, we collaborating with the clients to provide us uh, if uh, they needed some. If they needed some information about a uh, new tool if they want to run or at modeling for another tool. So we usually add it very quickly. Uh, so because the tool is different uh, on this slide, I would like to show you uh, only an example of deep azimuth resistive tools, of main deep azimuth resistive tools on the market, so how it can be different and how we can differently interpret it. So uh, we have a four main service company who can provide us uh, deep azimuth resistivity. It's uh, Baker Hughes, Lamberger, Halliburton, Weatherford. And uh, here on the last uh, two rows, you can see a spacing and frequencies. So for instance, for ADR, we have nine different spacings and three uh, frequencies. In comparison with either track, we have only one spacing and uh, two frequencies. So um, that means that they uh, can provide a different uh, depth investigation, different uh, curves, different data. And if you multiply this amount of the spacing, this number of the spacing uh, by frequencies, you can imagine how many logs, uh, for instance, ADR can provide. And uh, sometimes we limit it to stream all of these logs in real time. So we have to select the proper one on the pre-job stage. Uh, we have to keep in mind it before uh, running this tool. And as well, azimuth measurements can, can be interpreted differently. So for instance, for track, we have uh, this kind of uh, data obtaining from the well bore. It's a signal strength plus target direction. For Schlumberger, we have only geo signals. For ADR, we have uh, directional resistivity plus geo signals, and the same for guide weight. This number uh, we, we've got from uh, advertise, so it could be different in uh, in real time in actual on actual data because it's uh, I, I think it's measured on some synthetic simple models, so it could be different in reality. Uh, and 
two are different in configuration. So for here I would like to highlight the difference between two. So you can see that variety of uh, position transmitter against receiver and angle between transmitter and receiver are very big. Uh, for instance, for IZ truck, we have orthogonal position uh, of uh, transmitter against of receiver. And we have only uh, two spacings for uh, one spacing for ADR. We have uh, 45 degree between transmitter and receiver and a uh, uh, lot of different uh, spacings for gateway. For instance, we have uh, orthogonal position and 45 degrees. So the tools are very different. And before uh, running for modeling and uh, uh, running, in all these tools, we have to understand the differences between these tools. And the data uh, coming from these tools is very difficult to interpret if you have a complex formation. And for these purposes, we usually use some mathematical algorithm to uh, visualize this data. Uh, and uh, currently on the market, there are two main uh, approaches to analyze this data, deterministic and stochastic. And there are some hybrid between deterministic and stochastic, which includes benefits of uh, two of them. Uh, and these data provided from the vendor have a different visualization and palette. So you can see the example from uh, vendor one, vendor two, and vendor three. And uh, you can see that the representation of the data is different in different palettes, in different colors, in different scales. And as well, they have a different output. So if, for instance, if you want to save uh, these uh, results of inversion for later, you can save it in the picture or you can uh, request uh, some format to provide you to upload to some software. But for output formats is different. It's not standardized yet, uh, but uh, as I know, uh, Currently, industry uh, is working on uh, uh, applying some uh, default output formats. Um, and uh, because they pro uh, vendor provide you the results of uh, of the inversion and some pictures, some figure, it's difficult to analyze it uh, because, for instance, in some visualization, some scale, I can see small features in another scale i cannot see it so it's uh, good to have uh, a possibility to change a scale to change a palette to see more details or to see more uh, more clear uh, some contrast which uh, is important for now for for current uh, like decision making on anything else and uh, in in our software in roger we have stochastic conversion algorithm uh, it's um, uh like it, it's algorithm which can be considered unbiased because in this algorithm you don't need to put input model to set up input model before running inversion so that's that's why we can consider this algorithm like unbiased and it's based on almost all stochastic inversion algorithms on the market based on monte carlo method but we have some additional improvement like uh, reversible jump of jump uh, mark of chains and uh, uh, what is uh, interesting about what is different between deterministic inversion and stochastic? In deterministic, we have to set up some input model before running inversion. So we uh, relatively influence to the results of inversion. In stochastic inversion, you don't need to set up any uh, prior model. And uh, that's why I already said it, it's, it's it could be considered uh, like unbiased. And in our inversion, we calculate in each point, we calculate more than 10,000 different models. And uh, these models, uh, you can compare between each other. You can make some uh, analytics and uh, you can understand uncertainty of your boundary detection. And as well, uh, in in uh, inversion algorithm, uh, you can usually receive uh, some anisotropy uh, effect and notification. So you can um, assume what is an isotropic information that can be beneficial as well. Uh, on pre-job stage, what we need, uh, why we need to have uh, 
pre-drop preparation for uh, running inversion for forward modeling for resistivity tools, for Azium for resistivity tools. Uh, I already mentioned the tool can be different and it's too good to have uh, proper forward modeling beho before you run a drop because uh, in real time you can compare with logs uh, with actual log, you can understand uh, where you are, M maybe you can adjust your model based on this correlation, just simple correlation, and you have to understand how your curves will be re will be reacting in different scenario in uh, in di different strategy. And uh, another point based on uh, proper forward modeling is to run to calculate inversion before before the drop uh, again to see different scenarios to see how your inversion will be reacting different scenarios and to be prepared to these changes. And uh, another point to have algorithm to have uh, tool uh, in house for forward modeling and inversion that this ability that you can uh, compare different tools and uh, different logs, different set of the logs, and uh, choose proper tool and curve for uh, stream, so for streaming in real time. Um, so, as I, as I as I said, the uh, interpretation sometimes could be different, could be difficult to if you run this kind of tools in real time. So on this slide you can see. Uh, example of the logs of azimuthal logs for different tools in the same formation, uh, three layers formation. And uh, here you can see Periscope HD. Periscope HD has uh, two types of the logs, uh, geosignal logs, directional symmetrized logs and directional anti-symmetrized. If directional symmetrized logs, uh, it's uh, actual geosignals, we can interpret very easily in this simple condition. Like here I can see that uh, we have a positive signal, that means that I'm approaching a, uh, some conductive boundary above, and they have negative signal, it means that I'm approaching some conductive boundary below. But uh, anti-symmetrized curves, I cannot uh, interpret so easily because uh, they are sensitive to deep and anisotropy effect. Uh, it's uh, Sometimes it's important to have in real time, but you can see that uh, it's kind of difficult to interpret and uh for staying in reserve for decision making usually we use uh, directional centralized curves uh let's discuss as track as well because as track is uh, is the most uh, different tool from i mean in representation of the uh the logs is the most different tools uh in comparison with periscope so in as track we have uh, signal strengths and target direction uh, actually, this geo signal divided to these two uh, type of the logs. Uh, signal, string, uh, signal strength, maximum signal strength show us how far or how close we are from boundary and uh, target direction uh, show us uh, from which direction we expect to have this boundary. For instance, if I have a dots at the center of the track, it means that some boundary, some conducting boundary coming from below if I have a dots on the side of the track, uh, I can expect a boundary above. Um, that was like like prepare looks preparation on pre-drop um, in regards of uh, forward modeling, and uh, based on these uh, responses, we can simulate inversion uh, response in, in in the same condition. So here's a comparison um, of uh, four. Uh, deep azimuth resistivity tools we already discussed on the previous slides. And uh, uh, this uh, model is based on uh, star group benchmark. It's a group of uh, experienced uh, resistivity engineers. They created this uh, benchmark to test uh, different inversions algorithm and uh, different tools in the same conditions. And uh, you can see that, uh, for instance, in guide wave, uh, in this red zone, I can detect uh, conductive boundary below me earlier than as track, but it's not so precise and uh, than in as track. So that's uh, like the reason why we have to uh, make a pre-drop uh, to understand what is tool more 
uh, suitable and to, to our condition. For instance, if we, we want to stay to see to see these uh, boundaries on the bigger distance, uh, probably I will choose based on this uh, scenario, based on this uh, picture, I will I will choose uh, guide wave. But I want if I want to see this boundary more precise, and I don't want to uh, think about what kind of logs I need to stream in real time. Uh, probably I would uh, choose Azitrack because in Azitrack I have only four azimuthal logs and I can stream all of them in real time without um, thinking what, 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 what to choose. And the same we can do with uh, ultra deep azimuthal resistivity. So here you can see uh, in, on the same model, star model benchmark, you can see the response of and uh, different inversion results for. Uh, Geosphere, Visitrack, and Earthstar. What is special uh, about ultra deep azimuthal residues that they can uh, detect the boundaries on bigger distance, much bigger distance than deep azimuthal residues. For instance, for this example, we have uh, for Geosphere, we have uh, spacing between transmitter and receiver 160 feet, and uh, we detect these boundaries uh, sometimes bigger than spacing between them. So. It's approximately 180 feet of uh, um, depth investigation. Uh, now I would like to show you how it's easy to uh, make forward modeling curves in star steer. Let me open a project. So we, here we have a project from Australia. You can see that we have uh, uh, real time curves, sexual curves. Uh, image log, uh, gamma ray log, uh, resistivity, azimuthal resistivity, and density and drop velocity. And I would like to show you quickly how easy to create, how it's easy to create a, a forward modeling curves for this scenario. We, we just need to have uh, one log uh, in type 12, one resistivity log in type 12. For me, I will choose uh, P16 because it has the uh, best vertical resolution in my type well so we'll select this log here and create squared log and my squared log will automatically be created on uh, vertical track i can change parameters update it but uh, i'm happy uh, what i see now so so my my match is good and i can proceed to update my earth model i just need to click update earth model and my uh, model will be automatically updated under my interpretation. I just need to click to select it, visualize it, and I can show it in a vertical section and extraction. So here my model. And if I'm not happy with uh, position of my boundaries and uh, the values of uh, uh, resistivity in uh, in the layers, I can easily manually move these uh, parameters here on the vertical track. For instance, here I can see that my actual resistivity was a little bit uh, smaller than my uh, resistivity from time file, from no prognosis resistivity, and I would like to adjust my uh, Earth model to these values. After that, I can uh, propagate all of these parameters to other segments like this. So now we are ready to create forward modeling curves. We just need to click to another sub mode, forward modeling mode. And here I have a periscope HD. If I drop down this menu, I can see all my uh, all my uh, tools. And for this project, I need to select periscope HD tool. I can run all of my curves, just click run, and it will be appeared under my cross model. So here I have forward modeling curves. I would like to show the same forward modeling cur uh, curves uh, as I have uh, actual curves, P16, P40, and uh, A40H. So here we go. And if we change our model, these logs will be changed automatically, simultaneously. So it's very easy tool. You can run different scenarios very quickly. You can see your response of the logs very quickly. 
Daniel, can and, I yeah. interrupt you for a second? I uh, was just uh, wondering, uh, by looking at the logs, I do see the similarity between real-time logs and then the uh, forward modern curves you just created. So am I right to understand that we actually can use uh, forward modern curves as a way uh, to verify if we interpret it properly as a bed dip by comparison them with uh, real-time curves, right? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's actually right. So uh, if you have uh, in-house uh, this tool, you can compare in real-time, you can compare your uh, actual logs, your uh, forward modern curves, and you can see that, for instance, here I have A4T and I have A4T by blue on the actual data. And you can see that uh, the order of these uh, uh, logs are matching as well. So it's it's because of we have uh, some boundary buffers and boundary influence on the separation between curves. So these logs uh, can be used for correlation as well. So you can compare during real time, you can compare logs, you can find uh a match and you can adjust your model based on your logs without actual crossing a uh, boundary so that's that's another way of uh, using forward model okay, without inversion but inversion help us to uh see the small changes of uh, these curves and to, to see the better representation of uh, and interpretation of these uh, logs in real time. So in this project, I have uh, results of inversion calculation as well. So here we have an our inversion. And if I select one of the segment under my interpretation, I see different, as I already mentioned before, for um, stochastic inversion, we calculate uh, around 1,000, uh, more than 10,000 different models that uh, each point, and we can make some uncertainty analysis uh, after running inversion when we have a result. We can compare different probabilities between each other. I will drop all probabilities on one track, and let me select one of these segments, for example, here, and you can see the separation between different probabilities, the separation between different models in the output results. And uh, based on this separation, I can say that my uncertainty of uh, this boundary detection, this uh, red uh, high resistive boundary below, uh, uncertainty is about, uh, let's say, 25 centimeters. Yeah, it's not too much because we are very close to the boundary, but anyway, this tool can be used to understand your uncertainty and preciseness of your uh, inversion calculation. Uh, as well, not only position, as well the resistivity of your formation. For instance, here I see the separation of, of logs too. So I can say the uncertainty of my resistivity detection is about uh, 5 uh, ohm meters. Let's come back to presentation. Yeah. And uh, we discussed the implementation for pre -drop. Uh, for a modern stochastic inversion implementation for pre-job, let's discuss how we can use it for real-time gesture steering based on case studies. Uh, so usually because resistivity, uh, azimuth resistivity tools and uh, inversion itself is the uh, most expensive tools and they are more reliable in real time. And what we suggest to combine all the methods together and not rely only on resistivity because sometimes it can uh, show us uh, some artifacts More probably it uh, uh, this resistivity contrast not dealing with uh, like boundaries it can be dealing with fluid saturation can be dealing with uh, something else these dense layers etc etc so uh, we have to combine all the method together all the time and not rely only on resistivity uh, as well, what is uh, special about uh, having some in-house solution? Because you can uh, import uh, vendor inversion and you can see it like uh, electromagnetic model. So you can play with it, you can change parameters of your visualization, you can see some details, you can see anisotropy 
behind this picture and uh, you can play with this data. You can do some analytics after after maybe after the drink, maybe during the drink, but it's a data itself. It's not a picture. It's not a figure and uh, using some tool uh, to visualize the data from the vendor as, a, as it could be like I said, data set. Uh, it's it's very beneficial for for inversion and for for real time for post modeling. Uh, as well, to have uh, like in house for modeling and inversion, you can teach your personnel to uh, to understand this inversion with with two kind of tools better. So you can run different models on pre job stage to try to make like a simulator and uh, to show uh your uh personal how to react to different uh, scenarios or uh, unpredictable changes of uh, inversion or locks for modeling curves Daniel, and, may i ask you a question uh yeah. so does it mean that if uh, for example i have inversion from different vendors i can load them to star steer and visualize them using the same palettes because what we see that uh, each vendor provides different uh, palettes different scales so i could basically standardize all uh, the results from uh, different vendors right once i load yeah, them yeah that's that, that's correct and i think i I will show you here on the projects how it's possible to do because uh, in in my uh, inversion results I have four um, probabilities. I have most probable model for probabilities and can can show how you can visualize uh, different inversion results uh, in one project. For instance, I can play this this most probable model. Let me play with transparency, and you can see that if I play with transparency, I can see something on the background, my model on the background. And actually I can import different inversion from the vendor to visualize it on one cross section and playing with transparency, I can see the difference between them. So that's that's another advantage of, uh, of yeah, having, having some space where you store all your data Right, and I guess not just transparency, but the palette itself as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah palette, palette could be changed as well. It's very handy, very quickly. So when I'm changing a palette, you can see some details appeared or disappeared, and mm -hmm. I can see contrast uh, better, or I can play with uh, palette, for instance, like mm -hmm. to visualize another palette. I can see some other details. So Great. yeah. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Uh, so I would like to show you what is beneficial of using isomotal data in real time and inversion uh, calculation uh, based on case studies, our case studies. So the, the first example uh, came from uh, um, uh, Australia. Uh, it, it is the same well we uh, showed on a demo. So the what purpose of the, this well to target of the well uh, was to stay as close as possible to the top uh, and not to cross hard line, which is uh, Z1005. And when we reached this uh, hard line, we uh, had to cross the top because uh, we had down deformation and continue drilling along, along our target. And all the time we detected this target on the distance up to 2.7 meters, and we expected to cross it again somewhere. And that that was happened at the end of the well. So at the end of the well, we hit the target again, and uh, we were able to um, stay in the target for a while. So uh, if we don't use uh, isometal data or resistivity data here, we were not able to see. Uh, the target when we are in the shale. So probably if I use only gamma ray, I will stop drink. I would stop drink somewhere here because I will not see uh, if I if I not see if I don't see uh, a target for a while, I I will stop anyway. But with uh, azimuth resistivity, you can detect the boundaries on the distance, and you can expect uh, uh, the behavior of this boundary, and you can expect to cross it again 
uh, that what happened here. Uh, another case is from China and it's gravelites. It's uh, very laterally and vertically unstable. Uh, so you can see the blue is the shale um, above and below the top and the bottom of the target. Here we have uh, in a, in a, in a red we have a target and we have some let's say some zone some lines of uh, another color. It uh, it's a vertical changing vertical uh, vertical changing of uh, gravelite. So here probably we have uh, smaller grains and bigger grains etc. So they have a different uh, resistivities. And uh, what's special here? Here we have a pinch out. So another benefit of using uh, isomental data and uh, especially inversion and stochastic inversion as unbiased method, uh, you, you can use this in pinch out. So here we can detect, uh, at the, especially on the end of the well, we can detect two uh, boundaries simultaneously, and we can avoid crossing the top or the bottom of the target. And another uh, benefit of using uh, azimuthal data is to detect uh, fluid contacts. This is example which show us that uh, uh, we can have a titled oil water contact. Is uh, it's dipping up in drilling direction, and to avoid it, uh, we have to all the time we have to detect it on some distance. So here the distance was uh, up to three meters. And you can notice at the end of the well, we uh, had uh, some red zone above and blue zone below. And it uh, means uh, gas oil, gas, gas uh, saturated zone and oil saturated zone, or an oil saturated zone in between and water saturated zone uh, below us. So uh, it's possible to avoid this zone if you use azimuthal data because you can detect both fluid contacts at the same time. Uh, another benefit of using um, inversion, actually inversion itself, because uh, you can understand your formation better. For instance, in this example, the blue one is the top of the target, uh, this blue one is the bottom of the target, and you can see some changes which has happened after these depths, like 3,650, 3, uh, meter depths, you can see that we started to detect some uh, layers uh, uh, which is uh, dipping down in the drilling direction with uh, degree approximately 45, 60 degree. So it means that we are crossing some bars, probably it's uh, uh, old river, it's terrigenous formation, and it's geo mapping. We can, by knowing that we, we can have these uh, bars, we can plan another wells better and we can uh, understand our uh, formation better. So Daniel, the, uh, yeah. sorry to cut you. Uh, could we go back to the previous slide, please? Because I saw a question in the chat from Frederick Galis, and that was uh, actually a very good example uh, to answer his question, I think. So Frederick was asking if thin bats uh, can mess up the interpretation. Uh, could, could, could you repeat this question? Uh, it was uh, if uh, if uh, thin uh, bats uh, yeah. could mess up the interpretation because actually here we can clearly see as you were yeah, showing different yeah. sandbars are still visible uh, on the resistivity. Yeah, it's, 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 it, you you can detect as uh, thin layers, but it depends on uh, how thin it is. Because if uh, this uh, thickness of the layers less than vertical resolution of the tools, you cannot detect it. But if the higher than bigger than vertical resolution, uh, yeah, it could be detected. And as well, it depends on how much logs uh, you use in uh, real time. For instance, if you have only two logs GI signals. Probably for algorithm, for mathematical algorithm, it will be difficult to resolve because if you have so many small layers, thin layers uh, in in your depth of detection, you can um, algorithm cannot resolve it if you have uh, like a small amount uh, of of uh, of uh, curves, normal number of curves. 
So I hope you answer question. So, but the main goal of uh, uh, of uh, inversion is to stay in, inside the target. So this well was drilled uh, above, um, without inversion. Uh, it was drilled only these conventional logs and uh, isomotor logs uh, without calculating inversion. So you can see that uh, we crossed uh, uh, the top and the bottom of the target few times. And by using inversion, it was possible to detect the boundaries on the distance 1.5 meters and to stay inside the reserve. So you can hear it here, uh, the like dashed black line represents a possible uh, scenario when how we can drill a well if we have uh, uh, inversion. And uh, the last but not the least, as I mentioned before, one of the benefits is to use uh, uh, in-house in uh, to use in-house software is to run uh, some training, some simulator for your uh, for fresh employers. And uh, that's a good uh, uh, that's a good example how you can do it. So you can uh, simulate some scenario, you can run in version, and you can load it step by step to teach your personal how to properly react to changing of your form for forward modeling curves or changing your inversion uh, output. And in conclusion, I would like to highlight what we already discussed. So there is a very big variety of uh, resistivity tools on the market and uh, it's crucial to to know them to understand them and uh, to, to select the proper tool for your condition to select the proper logs to stream in real time and uh, based on our case studies it's very evident that uh, dar and udar data can help you uh, to enhance your well placement and the accuracy of your well placement. Uh, and if you have uh, forward modeling and inversion uh, algorithm in house, you can better prepare for your pre-job task. And in real time, you can uh, make uh, some data an analysis to, based on the data provided by vendor. And uh, because of inversion from vendor from uh, other companies uh, it's only mathematical algorithm and, and this algorithm uh, data driven so if you put some wrong data for calculation you will receive all wrong results so garbage in garbage out that's all from my side thank you for your attention and now we are ready to answer on your questions do we have any in the chat Yes, we do. So one of the questions was uh, from Tung. Uh, is it WIP? Uh, Daniel, do you know this abbreviation? Because I frankly do not. WIP, is it? Mm -hmm. I didn't think about it. No, I, I work don't think that progress. I know. Ah, yes, it I'm was work in work progress. In progress. Yeah. <laughs> it was with regards to 3D inversion, Daniel. Are we planning to add 3D inversion to Star Steer? Uh, OK, before implementing 3D inversion, we have to uh, properly run 2D inversion. I mean, it uh, could be perpendicular or the well or uh, parallel to the well. So now we are working on uh, not not we are going to start working in, in this year on 2D inversion itself. And after that, we can continue working on 3D implementation, but we don't have an, like a certain dates for now when we can implement it. Right, because currently the inversion that we have, it's uh, one and a half D. So basically, as Daniel was showing, we have this uh, like small columns, basically intervals, which could be as small as uh, one meter. Uh, and then basically they're uh, stuck together. So then I will go from the beginning, from the top. There was a question from Frederick about the minimum resistivity contrast uh, that's needed. In yeah, real it examples. Yeah, it, 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 it depends. The less can contrast we have, the uh, uh, shallow we can see. So if you want to see a 
uh, this boundary on the distance like uh, two meters, you have to get to have a very good contrast. But uh, I, I can say minimum twice. So you have to have a minimum twice bigger uh, resistivity mm -hmm. or lower resistivity. And uh, yeah, it depends on what distance uh, you want to see these boundaries. And the best way to understand it is to like forward modeling, to like to run inversion. So it's not difficult to, to do it. You can create, just create your expected model and you can run inversion to see what is will be uh, the distance of detection of different contrast boundaries. All right. So then the next question also from Frederick was, uh, do I need to collect 3D resistivity tool to get the anisotropy parameters for modeling purposes or it does not affect the result too much? Yeah, sometimes it, it, it affects. For instance, if you have uh, oil, uh, like a water saturated zone and you have a shale, how to distinguish these two zones? Because on inversion results, it will look the same. For instance, if you have shale with one on meters and you have a uh, water saturated uh, reservoir with uh, one on meters, how you can distinguish it on inversion results? You can distinguish only based on anisotropy effect. In shale, we have anisotropy effect. In 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 reservoir, usually we don't have. So the water with one on meter on meters will not have a, uh, usually will not have a, uh, anisotropy effect. So by knowing anisotropy effect, you can at least distinguish these two scenarios. But uh, it's good to have uh, anisotropy effect for formation evaluation. Uh, for instance, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, following this question, there was another question from Tung. Uh, at least, do you have any way of picking 3D features now to give an indication? Mm. I think he meant uh, 3D pictures from from inversion results. Uh, so we cannot visualize it. I mean, we, we cannot show it because our inversion in, in, in along the cross section. Um, and uh, to to map 3D picture 3D features. 3D, 3D, 3D features. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like a isotropy. I mean, I think the question is if we could actually pick up. Uh, 3D features, but we do can pick up uh, anisotropy from the tools uh, which are not 3D tools, like just VHD, for example. Yeah, for now, because we have we don't have a 3D algorithm, we cannot mm -hmm. pick up it. So we can show it only in like 1.5D, 2D in cross section. Mm -hmm. So the, the the short answer will be no, mm -hmm. but. We have to know the purposes of this. So why do we need to know it uh, on the side of the well board? Right. The next question from Oscar. I'm sorry, I'm not uh, try I'm not always reading the surnames because I'm afraid it will sound uh, very wrongly. Uh, Oscar is asking: Is there a minimum bed thickness for which the inversion model can be used? Uh, for example, three feet layer. Yes, three feet layers. It should work because uh, vertical resolution for uh, phase shift, uh, for instance, phase shift, it could be like uh, 30, 40 centimeters. And uh, yes, three feet uh, should be seen by uh, inversion algorithm. But it depends. Uh, again, it depends uh, on what is the contrast. If uh, we have a good contrast on these layers, we can see it. And another point. What kind of uh, um, logs you will use to run this inversion? You have to include uh, logs with the best vertical resolution to map these small features, small mm. layers. Right, and I think the advantage uh, in uh, Star Steer is that actually you can really try which logs would give you the best result. So, and sometimes you can exclude uh, some logs from the inversion calculation. Sometimes you can just add. So, prior to doing a real time inversion calculation, when the time is limited, it's possible to actually do a lot of preparation job to verify what would be the best log in these specific geological conditions. Yeah. That's, that's for sure because uh, 
pre-drop is, 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 is important. So on pre-drop stage, you can prepare for different scenarios and you can understand what will be your contrast and select the logs you want to use for inversion calculation. So that's, that's important, especially with uh, ultra deep isometric state. Because in ultra deep isometric state, we have more than 100 uh, logs from Geosphere, for instance. For Isotrack, we have only four logs. We can stream all, all together. But for Geosphere, we have to think about what we uh, need in real time for this special condition, this certain condition. Right. Uh, going further, uh, another question from Oscar. Do you think laterally uh, discontinuous anhydride st uh, stringers upset the inversion model? Um, yes. Should <laughs> answer yes. Yes. Yeah. But um, yeah, anyway. Um, for, for, let's imagine the situation when you have only like four uh, four curves from isotrack and you have uh, uh, thin information and uh, pinch out. So for these two curves, it's sometimes uh, it's very difficult for for algorithm to build a proper model because you don't have enough data, like you don't have enough logs, uh, let's say capacity to resolve this model. Uh, but if you have more logs and uh, you have a different logs with different depth investigation, it uh, lateral changes will influence the results of an inversion. But anyway, it could be resolved if you have enough data. Enough, enough data. So if you have enough logs uh, with different depth investigation. So I hope yeah, I, I answered on the question. So uh, um, basically. Am I right to understand? I mean, anhydride is a salt, so does how salt would affect the uh, resistivity? Yes, yeah, salt has a very high resistivity. So uh, because propagation resistivity limited by uh, two around 2,000 ohm meters, it depends on the tool. So sometimes it doesn't work in this condition. But mm -hmm. we have to, uh, yeah, to, to understand and to know it, we have to run like Bridge of model to see how it works there, because we have a, in comparison with ladder lock tool, for instance, we have two types of resistivity: uh, ladder lock tools and uh, uh, propagation resistivity tools, which can be used in real time. For ladder lock, it's not a problem because in ladder lock we can uh, we can detect resistivity higher than 2,000 ohm meters, but for propagation, it's it's it, it matters. Uh, doesn't work with in high risk formation. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question, uh, if for resistivity inversion gives an indication of false or no? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. If you have uh, sharp changes, uh, I don't have any. Yeah, okay, I don't have it here. If you have any sharp changes, it will be detected. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, again, it depends on uh, list of your logs you are using in real time so mm -hmm. if it's possible it's possible uh then uh, we have two more questions one is from uh jose uh based on your experience specifically about the different tools which one offers uh better results <laughs> <laughs> I think I answered it above uh, in the chat, and Daniel, you can confirm uh, later if I'm right or wrong. Um, we cannot provide this kind of answer simply because, uh, that, as you saw, the tools are slightly different, and uh, basically, it, uh, the way they will perform depends also on the geological conditions and on the well targets. So, what are you aiming? Whether you aim to uh, see as far as possible from the well bore, or you're aiming to know the uh, you know that the resistivity contrast boundary you have would be closed, but you want to uh, map it very accurately. So, I don't think we can give uh, the answer which tool uh, would be better. The only thing I can say, you DAR obviously look uh, deeper than DAR. So in this case, it's easier to say that you DAR would be better than DAR. But uh, on the other side, they're definitely way more expensive. Daniel, am I right? Yeah, we cannot we cannot suggest to use uh, some tool instead of another because uh, it depends on your uh geology depends on your uh, like capacity of uh, of possibility of streaming the data from the 
um, uh, bid and etc. So it's it's very difficult to say what what tools better, what tools like what uh, what tool we can suggest to use because it, in different situations it works differently. So uh, the best way is to try it on your certain condition and to choose what tool you want, what this tool is more proper for your condition. Right. And then the last uh, question from Frederick. Uh, for the stochastic conversion, what's the range of possible models you can choose? Are the users input like range of values? Range of values. Uh, so you can probably see it also, Daniel. It's uh, close last to one. Uh, Yeah. Uh, the range of the model. So we don't influence on, on the range of the model. Depends. It algorithm understands the uh, like um, complexity of the uh, formation itself. So it can calculate in different part of of, uh, of trajectory. It can calculate a different amount of the models because in uh, homogeneous formation it can calculate. It can resolve uh, the model with only one output. And in like very heterogeneous formation, it can run more than 40, 50,000 models because it's difficult to find solution. And uh, yeah, it really depends. We don't influence to uh, to any like we don't tune any input parameters for, uh, for concerning models. In, in number of models, yeah. Right, and then the input data uh, which uh, put actually to the stochastic conversion, it's very minimal. We just need to constrain the minimum and maximum parameter or minimum and maximum values of resistivity, and then the thickness of the interval for calculation, and then sliding window uh, to the left and right from uh, this uh, interval where it's calculated. So, and basically, this is it. That uh, and then the amount of layers that we have and whether we want to uh, include the anisotropy. But that's uh, the only uh, user input to uh, stochastic conversion calculation, calculation using uh, our solution. All right, I saw the one more question came about how our clients are getting direction data from tools. Uh, because vendors are not that happy to share such information. Well, I can answer that question that. It uh, very much depends uh, on the agreement between the vendors and uh, clients, uh, I mean, vendors and operating uh, companies. Uh, but fortunately, there are quite many operators right now who actually do get uh, azimuthal resistivity data and even get it streamed in uh, real time or at least get it in a memory. I think, uh, yes, the initial setup uh, was the way that vendors were just providing uh, the uh, figure as the output uh, of application of uh, Darvidar tools in the BHA. Uh, but later on, especially I think with uh, the fact that there is another solution to calculate inversions these days, uh, I mean, vendor independent solution as uh, Star Steer, basically it uh, kind of uh, pushes this uh, situation to uh, sharing the data. And uh, also, operators uh, are often uh, would be more involved in actually Q, uh, QC of the data and understand more about how the uh, calculation was performed. So they are also eager to uh, get the data these days. So that's how it's uh, what I see happening, at least in uh, Norway and in some other European countries. Yeah, we are running out of the time. So yes, uh, but Thank I was uh, I was very glad that there was a, there were a lot of questions. Thank you very much. If you would like to uh, contact us, please write to Norway at uh, roger.com and we will answer uh, any other upcoming questions and uh, see you soon.